Hello everyone, Zena and Zimmer here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Star Wars Core. Last time, we did some odds and ends. This time, I realised we haven't done much talking to Jolie, and I realised we skipped one thing, one talk, but it was just more of a... not really useful. I don't want to talk about that. Well, I do. Spit out already. Now that's a unique method of getting someone to talk. Thunder about like a bantha in a circuit shop. Does that work for you often? Let me tell you something. Once you've lived as many years as I have, you'll have yourself a long, long list of memories. If you're lucky, most of them will be good. If you're not, some will be bad. If you're really unlucky, some will be so bad you never want to be reminded of them again, ever. You'll go far away to a place that doesn't hold any memories at all. And there you'll be happy just to forget and be forgotten. Is that why you went to Sheik? <laughs> Partly. Maybe. I doubt I could ever explain it to you fully, even if I wanted to. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in love? Truly in love, I mean, and not simple infatuation. Well... Exactly. You're still at the beginning of your life. There will be men in your life, perhaps many men. But if you're fortunate, you'll find love once. The Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. What's this? Love advice from Uncle Jedi? And Jedi? why not? All this nonsense about avoiding love is so much foo-foo. I shouldn't be the only one who realizes that. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear and can be controlled, but passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Uh, listen to me go on as if I had all the answers. What do I know of love anymore? I'm just a lonely old man who's not even a Jedi. No one to hear what I'm saying. do, do you? I wouldn't listen too closely. I'm no authority on anything. I just think that the greatest things in life shouldn't be avoided because they come with a few complications. Love causes pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. I suppose there are perfect eternal loves out there, but I haven't seen any. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you? So I'm between you and your I haven't changed my mind. I'm still not going to talk about it. You go and find your own love if you want to know so badly. I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you and the one you love simply aren't meant to be together. The trick is to know when that is. To know when it's time to fight and when it's time to part ways. <laughs> there I go, waxing philosophical again. Somebody blast me already. Let's get going before I start talking in riddles, damn it. Got something. Yeah, we can. We've got to leave and come back. But we're here to hopefully deal with little, little important, and I will not lie, disturbing quest. Hopefully. If it Tears. God damn it. And no it didn't. God bloody damn it. Try another planet. Cause I'm quite sure. Cause I did get some more dialogue. But Got something up. Why did you leave Jedi? <laughs> Who said I left the Jedi? You did. You said you weren't a Jedi anymore. Well, technically, I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. What do you mean, it left you? you that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things, really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect. They can do no wrong. 
They think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. I certainly don't think that. <laughs> I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. No doubt you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility. But it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. So, the Jedi wronged you in some way? I take it- No, no, the Jedi always treated me well. It would be foolish and untrue to say otherwise. That's not what I meant, anyway. Come to think of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, damn it! But for your sake, I'll try to explain. I'll tell you a little tale about a Jedi Master I once knew. Hortaf, I think. Or was it Hortoff? Ah, I can never get it straight. Is this going to have a point? <sighs> you know the problem with the youth today? <laughs> Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortaf. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well. But the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him in the urge to use the Force, Master Hordath. Allow the Force to see for you. But he refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on. The other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. I'm not finished yet, now shush! So, one day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and, no, not knowing, the asks him for directions to the council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally, and he asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else. But the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway, though whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, well, we'll never know. No, no, both of them were from before my time. Well before the Sith Wars, even. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. Got some. Up. Oh. How may I be a... Okay. Of God. Someone suddenly barged into a room is not exactly good for recording. If I can't erase it. Oh my god. Incoming fighters! something bad bad men women too to be fair who's playing games ask the next sith you see if they're bad and they'll set you straight you're being elusive and purpose <sighs> and just what gave you the impression that i know anything more about the sith than you do it 
This is fucking. Oh, that's right. Damn the years of a young. I was expecting you to be your usual inattentive self when I mentioned that. So it's true, yes. I fought plenty of Sith. That was during the time of Exar Kun. Oh, 40 years ago now. Has it been that long? Uh, Exar was a Jedi who was corrupted by ghosts of the old Sith, or so they say. He attempted to conquer the Republic and create a new golden age of the Sith. Sort of like Revan. I mean, me. <laughs> I said he was guilty. Better to say he was defeated, but essentially, yes. The victory did not come easily, however. That is not a pleasant time to remember. After Exar Kun fell to the dark side, he attempted to recruit other Jedi to his cause. What surprised us, what took us completely unprepared, was how utterly successful he was. Many Jedi joined him and became Sith themselves. Why they did, I... I will never truly know, but they did. Battle broke out throughout the Order, pupil against a master. We fought ourselves. Yes, more than difficult. Next to impossible. How do you fight against someone you love? Pah, I dislike such memories. It leaves a taste in the mouth that... Uh, it is a sadness I thought I'd put aside long ago. Ask me about the war some other time, just not now. I would prefer to be by myself for now. Got some... How may I be? Still no. Great. The quest isn't appearing. But we can at least get more dialogue from Jolie. Sir Julie Bindu. Got something on your mind, do you? Not particularly. Mm, such a charming and persuasive manner you have there. Forget it! <sighs> I'm not interested in your demands. I'll tell my story when I'm damn good and ready, which isn't now, so shoot! Got something. I suppose you're going to nag me until I cough it up, aren't you? Nothing is private anymore, it looks like. Ugh, there's no escaping it, I guess. So be it. My wife's name was Nayama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. Bah! You got ears that work, don't you? I was a smuggler, way, way back. I got shot down once over Yukatis. That story, yes. My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the Force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. Nayama was a marvel of a woman. Fiery, determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. Oh, and that body. Well, yes, that. <laughs> Needless to say, I eventually won her over. That was after I kidnapped her upon being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. But, uh, that's another story entirely. At any rate, I wanted to train her in the Jedi way. The Council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but not yet ready to be a full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train another, especially not one so old as my wife. So you used to be the Council. Like I, did. I did. I wasn't the first and I won't be the last. The problem with self-righteous folk is they think they're more right than everyone else. I believed in her and trained her in secret. I'd 
ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. And she loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. Exar Kun is what happened. Niyama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi. To join her in Exar's war. I hadn't thought so, not right then. I was too proud to believe that of her. I had trained her myself. I loved her. I pleaded with her to reconsider, to think about all that she was throwing away. To think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle. But I defeated her. No, no. I had her at my mercy. Disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me, and I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. I grieved for her death, inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. I had trained Niyama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance, and she went on to kill others. Not to mention that I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with a trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? Of course I deserve to be punished. They found me innocent anyway. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. No, maybe you don't at that. They may have been able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. I... yes, I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Uh, it is all so long ago, lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Let's continue on with the task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today. Oof. Got something. Up. Oh. Heavy. Very heavy with Julie says. Be a... uh. <sighs> Caught. Caught on surfaces. Your wish. I'm here. Still not appearing. That means there might be one dialogue box that I missed. Got something on your. Oh, that was not until many years later to tell the truth. I spent quite some time wandering the galaxy. Why wouldn't they? I had refused my promotion to Jedi. I was a Padawan who had left the Order, nothing more. I traveled from one civilized system to the next, never staying long. I don't even think I knew what I was searching for. It wasn't as if my travels were pleasant either. There were plenty of folks who distrusted the Jedi after the war, or worse. I suppose so. 
Not everyone would understand why the Jedi would suddenly start killing themselves and tearing up half the galaxy, would they? If people weren't treating me with suspicion, they were looking at me with greed. I don't know how many thought they could make use of me for their own ends. I got so sick of the treachery and deceit. I left the civilized parts of the galaxy and headed instead for the uncivilized parts. So that's when you're Actually, I was on my way somewhere else when I crash landed on Kashyyyk. The ship I was using was a rust bucket. When you fix your ship, you keep going. <laughs> I'm no mechanic. And besides, after you plunge nose first in the trunk of a five kilometer high tree, chances are you don't have much ship left. So you crash and stage? Sure, why not? Seemed like an interesting enough place to spend a couple of decades exploring. And the Wookiees didn't mind your presence? Oh, they did at first. Oh, yes. I can't say I was overly pleased to encounter a group of indigenous giant carpets either. I can assure you of that. You seem on peaceful terms with them. Well, that was after two decades of helping them. They certainly didn't trust me at first. You helped them? When I could, I would assist a few young ones who would get lost in the Shadowlands or attacked unexpectedly by the wildlife. I must say, for a while there, the Wookiees actually thought I was some kind of benevolent forest god. Amusing, really. I set them straight eventually. Wasn't it all a bit primitive for you? Not really. Kashyyyk is a place you can feel very small in. It felt good to devote my time to helping people and living simply. You spent two decades living like that. What can I say? I did it all <laughs> for the Wookiees. The Wookiees? The Wookiees. Well, okay, maybe I needed some time on a quiet and remote planet, but if you ever need a friend, an incredibly strong hairball isn't a bad call. I suppose I am, in a way, despite the smell. For a race of gardeners, they've developed quite interestingly. Gardeners? You remember the alien computer, correct? Kashyyyk was meant to be an agricultural planet. The Wookiees were made for a reason. Or at least, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm an old man who's had a long time to develop that opinion, so don't argue with me. At any rate, we should be moving along, don't you think? If you sat around this long in the Shadowlands, a tack would eat you. One more check with Gina, honey. Tell me. What? Yeah, no. So we'll use that as our stopping point for this episode. Because honestly, I mean, you're thinking there's going to be a lot of time I've got to waste, or I've been unlucky. Plus, this recording session isn't. is. Now coming to an end, honestly, today, much more time, and I, want, I do want time to play my own games. So, with that, next time, hopefully we'll do Fret from Zor, but if not, we'll move on to Starforge, truly this time. This is Zeno Nazuma, signing out.